Hey, this is Lorena, and I wanted to do a video for you. It's a long arm quilting video. It's a, it's a long arm video. What I wanted to share with you in this long arm quilting video, I went ahead and I worked on one of my client's quilts, which it's a beautiful quilt. It's a double wedding ring quilt. I had to computerize quilt it, but at the same time, I also had to go ahead and custom quilt it. So in this video, I'm going to share some of the tools that I used, which wasn't really many of them. Well, the ruler I used, and also to how I went in the process of quilting it. So I really do hope you like this video. I hope you join us. I'll see you in the long arm quilting, okay? I'll, I'll see you there. I did use a Lisa Cali curve ruler. You are going to need one of these beauties to do this kind of work because it gives you the ability to move the long arm around. Groove Pro Echo 18. It literally fit beautifully to the double wedding ring. I was able to use this side of the arc and this side of the arc for this process. Thank you Lisa Kelly for making it. I really did like it. I also wanted to share with you, I decided not to custom quilt the inside of the quilt. It takes a lot of time and and they have beautiful computerized designs already. So I'm going to go ahead and share with you the design that I chose, but they have some really beautiful different designs and I'm going to also post pictures of other designs that you can use to do double wedding rings. I decided to let my computer do it. Now I did have to go back around and plot in those areas to make sure that the design fit perfectly. Um, do your plotting well so that when you go on the computer and you put the design there, it fits perfectly. I did spend 15 hours quilting this quilt. I was surprised at how much time stitching in the ditch takes. So if you're someone who is a long armor and you're doing it for business and maybe you do pantos and you wanted to get into custom quilting, consider that stitching the ditch takes a long time. A long, long time. Your back starts to hurt. <laughs> You gotta take a lot of breaks. <laughs> and then when you're exhausted, you are you start messing up. You, you, you're in the ditch goes off the ditch. You, you fall off the ditch <laughs> when you're doing this. So I want you to know that take breaks, give yourself some time to recover. My husband was so right. This is hard on your body. I recommend when you're stitching in the ditch, if you have hydraulics or if you're debating on purchasing hydraulics, buy them. If you're getting a gamel and you're thinking, should I get hydraulics? Will I use them? Yes, you will. Uh, I raise my table to the breastplate of my, underneath my breast. And what I like about that, I'm in an upright position. I'm not hunching over. I'm not leaning over the machine. And I can quilt in an upright position. That was the best way for me to do a lot of the stitching in the ditch. Also to make sure when you're stitching in the ditch, don't have the fabric rolled so far away from you that you're leaning and hunching. Your shoulders are going to be on fire. <laughs> How do I know? <laughs> huh. I ended up having my, because, you know, I didn't want to keep rolling the quilt, okay? <laughs> so I was leaning over, stitching in the ditch. You're leaning over in a really weird position and... You don't realize how many how many hours you're at it when you're custom quilting it. Your body starts to hurt. Even got to a point when I sat down my sofa, you know where you have back cramping pains? <laughs> so take care of yourself when you're stitching in the ditch. Be mindful of your body. I know you want to get the job done. I know you want to finish it because you're excited on how it's going to turn out. But... Um, 
you don't want to be injured to where you can't quilt tomorrow. I do recommend if you have the opportunity to get hydraulics, the hydraulics, they are extremely helpful, especially in stitching in the ditch on quilts. Because you're upright, you're not leaning over, you're not hunching, you're not, yeah. I, I just can't say enough. I am so thankful that I spent that $1,500. After hunching, uh, I was like, I can't do this no more. Thank God for those hydraulics. Thank God I thought of purchasing them when I did. Another thing I had to do is when I was on my long arm and I was basting everything down, those curve areas, I noticed I really had a hard time basting them perfectly to where it was nice and even. So I had to go back on my sewing machine and make sure that I unstitched that area and rebasted everything to make sure that there was no pleats, no puckering, none of that. But when I was on the long arm, I ended up having a lot of problems with rippling. What I really wanted to do is just tack everything down and make everything solid. And this is very fragile material. And I think it's antique fabric. So I just go down away from the fabric. So what I'm going to do is I'm pleating in a couple different areas here. Um, I pleated here, here, here. Just tiny tucks so that I didn't have a big giant pleat. And the reason I'm doing this on my sewing machine is I have more control. Sometimes on the long arm, 
I'm leaning over and it starts to hurt my back. So this way I could sit and I could work on all the edges of this quilt. And I know that I'm sewing it down clean. I really do hope you like this long arm quilting tutorial. I really do appreciate you watching, okay? So I'll talk to you in the next one. And, and let me share all these beautiful pictures of this beautiful quilt. I want to thank my client for giving me the opportunity to quilt it for her. And I just want to thank her for this uh, chance to do it. So, see you later.